Hello, everyone. And um, Andrew, thank you so much for your kind introduction. It is my absolute great honor to be with you today. Um, I want to just thank you once again. This is a very prestigious event, and I am honored to be with so many leaders in the industry who have already spoken today. Thank you. And Sheila, USAA Board Chair and Commissioner, Emeritus Bailey, and the USAA team, thank you again for the invitation and for including UTC in this critical venue. Thank you sincerely. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not personally send my condolences to the USEA family upon the loss last year of your executive director, Barry Worthington. Although I did not have the privilege of working with Mr. Worthington, I know he built USEA into one of the most important voices in Washington and indeed the world. So I will continue to keep his family and the greater USEA family in my prayers. Finally, this is my first uh, speaking engagement since, since the inauguration of President Biden and uh, Vice President Harris and Howard U alum. So as a proud Howard graduate myself, seeing Vice President Harris take the oath meant so much to me personally. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge this milestone. Um, I've been wearing my vice and blue at every opportunity, not today, but I also wear my red, white, and blue to signify my belief in our great nation and our leaders to make thoughtful and educated decisions and create just laws that address every critical issue that affects the industry and the nation. And many have been talked about today. So let me get right into it. As I know, um, we, Andrew explained that we're running behind, but I'm not going to rush. I'm going to take my time, but I do want to get right into it. Uh, let me give some background about the Utilities Technology Council. Some of you may already know, but UTC represents electric, gas, and water utilities as they develop and maintain private communications networks that underpin the infrastructure used to power our lives. These communication systems are the invisible infrastructure utilities rely upon to ensure that the power, the gas, and the water is on and available at nearly all times. Importantly, we do represent all types of utilities, investor-owned, public power, and cooperative. As most face the same challenges with their communication systems in acquiring spectrum, building and managing their private networks, uh, and other areas, as we all know, navigating through federal regulatory policies, they face all the same challenges. But I just wanna take a moment also not to lessen what they do and thank all of our energy and utility workers for everything they do every day to power our country. I personally am inspired every single day by our members, the men and women in the field working through all kinds of hazards to keep the lights on and the water and the gas flowing. Uh, so if any of our members are on today, these jobs are dangerous every day in normal times. But when you add the pandemic, and the sacrifices members make every time they go to work. Um, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And I want to thank the, thank everyone. We have so many dedicated people that are maintaining the infrastructure that powers our lives. And I just want to say thank you to our collective members who may be watching for all you do. You are public servants in every sense of the word. And I look forward to working with my colleagues right here that are at this participating in this conference to support any and all efforts aimed at ensuring that the utility and energy workers are among the first to get the COVID-19 vaccine and considered first responders as well. And I know this is a top priority for everyone listening. So please know that UTC is with you as well. So let's talk about uh, what I love about UTC and why and the issues. Of course, because we represent all types of utilities. We're all, we are the only organization that actually is open to every kind of utility. We're a small staff, but I often say small but mighty, which makes us nimble and actually more responsive to our members' needs. And in this role, it gives me an, a unique perch before both the energy and the tech industries, which are colliding, as we see, as utilities modernize their systems to bring about greater uh, connectivity. 
uh, resilience and security. And you've heard quite a bit today about clean energy and the grid of the future. All of these new technologies rely on the private communications networks that utilities and UTC members operate every day. But there's another societal benefit to utility private networks, and that's the broadband expansion. More and more utilities of all kinds are becoming key players in connecting Americans through broadband networks as we know. So as important as these networks are to modernizing our energy system, they're also critical in bridging the digital divide. Uh, the reason I believe broadband accessibility is so important to our nation is because if you look at the numbers, far too many Americans lack access to affordable, reliable um, broadband. And it really doesn't matter where you live. This is a rural, urban, and suburban issue. Um, now there are numerous reasons for, you know, this divide, but rather than talk about the problems, let's focus on the solutions uh, and why electric utilities are key partners in bringing broadband services to the unserved and underserved communities across the U.S. Because utilities are investing in grid modernization technologies, such as fiber and other communications infrastructure, uh, all kinds, hundreds, they're all leveraging these investments to provide broadband services together. And this work was being done pre-COVID-19. So I want to stress that, that, of course, as we all know, they didn't just start this because of the pandemic. And the interim, we've heard um, a lot of evidence from our members that since the pandemic hit, the demand for their services has just skyrocketed. And generally, we're seeing an increase in interest in utilities of all kinds in providing broadband and can be broken down into two main categories. The first group provides what I call direct access, which essentially means these utilities are the internet service providers for their customers. And typically, these utilities are rural electric cooperatives and public power utilities, and they're able to provide gigabyte speeds at affordable prices, and that's great. Um, but in fact, I do think some of our members in rural areas provide faster, more reliable service than many of us even receive in urban or suburban areas, but I, I don't have uh, data to support that. Uh, but often the second group, let me talk about the second group. That was the first group. The second group provides so-called middle mile services in which a utility will lease a portion of their fiber network so a third party, uh, to a third party so they can bring broadband closer to these unserved and underserved communities. For the most part, these partnerships revolve around investor-owned utilities providing middle mile services that assist local companies or in at least one case that we know of, a local utility to tap into this network and provide high-speed broadband to their customers. Let me give you a couple of examples. Right here in our back door in Virginia, Dominion Energy, uh, Virginia and Appalachian Power are complying with a state law that allows these utilities to invest in grid modernization networks that can be accessed um, by local companies to bring broadband to homes and businesses in unserved areas. Another, West Virginia lawmakers recently passed a similar law and back in 2018 in Mississippi, Entergy won approval from their state regulators to sign a long-term contract with regional internet, internet service providers that allow them, the ISP to deploy broadband networks to connect Entergy's smart meters. So there's a lot of collaborative work going on. Um, we are also hearing more from our IOU members about programs and proposals in their states as well. So just to give you the breadth of how many utilities across the U.S. are providing uh, broadband in some way, whether it be directly or through the middle mile, uh, it's, it's in the hundreds. But that number is changing every day. And of course, if you're interested in, in seeing more details, please, I encourage you to go to uh, utc.org uh, to our website because we continually update our collateral and information so that it's more accurate. So I just want to, to add that. I don't want to go into the details, but it's over the hundreds. And I want to talk about what UTC, how we, what we do for our members. We provide our members with many member benefits. One is we provide advocacy 
We're an educational resource along with venues that share best practices and lessons learned. And we do this in person and we've become pretty good at doing it virtually as well. We do it domestically and internationally. Um, as our mission says, we wanna foster collaboration to come up with technology solutions and that's what we're doing. Most recently, UTC has worked with our members to advocate on their behalf um, on the rules of the FCC's recent Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. And I know you've talked about that. I heard uh, some of uh, my colleagues speak about that. And then to work with, uh, we work with our members once they would receive, once the rules are final. Um, so there's many ways, uh, many things that we're doing to make sure that we, we wanted our members to participate in the auction, but we also wanna make sure after once the auction is done and the next steps. We've also held numerous events and webinars and workshops to educate and inform members on federal and state activity. More information about utility broadband, of course, as I stated, is available on our website. UTC is also active with state regulators and legislatures to spread the word on how utilities are key partners in empowering broadband deployment. We've held meetings and sessions to various state policymakers over the years, and we will continue to do so as more and more of our members get involved with broadband. But finally, our Utilities Broadband Committee continues to serve as a critical venue for all utility, for utilities of all stripes and technology vendor partners can gather as well, share information, and discuss the latest policy developments in Washington and elsewhere. And of course, we're also collaborating with you and developing new contacts and partnerships to get ahead of the issues as it relates to our changing environment. Pandemic today, something else tomorrow. And we're doing this via articles, podcasts, meetings, however we can to get the job done and to raise awareness for our members. So I'm going to try to wrap this up uh, for us. The purpose of my presentation was just to demonstrate how many utilities are out there providing broadband services. We've already stated that the broadband issue is very critical at this time. And I just wanted to also emphasize how utilities of all stripes and nearly every single state are providing this service. And I'm inspired by our members every day because, but, but even more so when I hear from those out in the field working on new ways to connect with their customers, you and me and our family members, um, it just continues to uh, really put me inspired. And I wanna just thank you. I know we will not have time to answer any questions because we are a little bit behind, but please feel free to reach out to myself, go to utc.org or our excellent staff and team. We are small but mighty, but we're ready to provide you with information and work together for solutions. Thank you so much.